Welcome to today's morning devotion as we continue with our theme of the month, Christian Outreach. It is indeed a calling that we have been called to go out and reach out to the lost. Let us always remember that God has given us everything so that we can do what he has called us to do. Many a times we forget this calling and only think of ourselves and how we will inherit eternal life. But we are called to bring others, to disciple others. We are disciples to disciple others. We are called to go out and preach the good news. That is evangelism. We are also called to go out and change lives. And that is outreach. We've said that outreach is more of action oriented, while evangelism is about the message. Yesterday, we saw one principle of outreach, that outreach should be transformational. It should go out and change the lives of how people live, how they see things, and also have an impact to their daily life. Today, we look at the other principle of outreach, that outreach is relational. By relational, it means that there is connection. There is connecting one person to the other, that it involves connecting with other people. When we are doing outreach, we must create relationships. We must connect with others. We need to communicate with other people. When Jesus Christ was doing outreach, he would make friends. He would go out and speak to anyone and make friends with the sinners and the lost and have a relation with them. It is going beyond our personal relationships and creating new connections with others. When we were called we came to a society of Christians. And when we are being sent out for outreach, we are now being told that go out and make new connections with the lost. Go out and seek the society that does not believe in me, now that is Jesus Christ, and make a connection with them. What Christ is telling us and what the Bible teaches us is that you cannot do outreach without being in a relationship with the people that you are preaching to that we need first to have a relationship so that they get the message from our relationship. We do not only go out. While evangelism is going out and preaching to people probably we do not know and proclaiming the good news and talking of the gospel of and dying and resurrection of Christ, outreach is more relational. There is a lot of communication and also connection. And there are steps that we ought to know that help us to do relational outreach. Number one is that outreach should start with an approach. When Jesus Christ was calling Peter, he approached him. He was the one who initiated the communication. He's the one who sought to have a connection with Peter. He was a sinner. In fact, he tells him, go away, I am a sinner. But through his approach, a loving approach, he was able to bring him to himself. And we too, we are called to go out and make relations. When we are making relationships, we who believe in Christ are therefore called to go out and do or start the conversation by making an approach. We need to start by approaching people. Many of our Christians believe that being a Christian is living a lonely life and not connecting all interacting with the lost, interacting with the world. No, what we are called to do is that we are disciples. Then we are equipped to go out and make other disciples. And for us to make those disciples, therefore we need a relation. And that relationship will start with an approach. Jesus Christ went out beyond his limits to call all the 12 disciples by making a relationship with them. We see God coming in form of a fire in a burning bush and approaching Moses. He starts by introducing himself. He starts by telling him what he has called him to do. And he starts by making a relationship. And we can see how the relationship went. And they had a very good relationship and a friendship with Moses. We also see God calling Jeremiah, he is the one who goes for the first approach. He starts with an approach. We too should go out 
and approach those who maybe are unapproachable, those who people feel should not be talked to, those who people feel they are not lovable, we can evangelize to them. We can do Christian outreach to them by just starting by an approach. A greeting may do wonders. We are called to God by God to go out and make relationships with the lost. Number two is that we are called to make companionship with the people who are lost. Now, for us to do relational outreach, there must be companionship. There must be trust. There must be friendship. This is what Jesus did with the disciples. It was a journey. They built a relationship, a friendship, slowly by slowly. The same with outreach. Outreach is not like evangelism. While evangelism can be a one-time event, outreach is a process. It takes time. It will take time. It may take years. It may take months. For some, it, will make, it may take days. But the truth is, when we go out for outreach, and we know that we have been called to go and preach to these people through action, we must have a relationship with them. We have first to approach them. Number two is to make a companionship or a friendship with them. They ought to trust us that indeed we are Christians, that indeed we are people they can trust. We need to be patient with them. Not everyone will be welcoming to us. Some of them may take time before they even trust us. We also need to be gentle. Not all are as gentle as we are. For some may also insult us, but we need to be gentle in, on how we answer them. For some may be lost, may be hopeless. For them, they may not only or also feel like we are doing the right thing by approaching them. Others will be defensive, but for us we are called to be gentle and kind so that we can win them through our actions. Remember, evangelism is said it is more focused with the message, but for outreach, it is about action. So we need to go out to these people and we ask the Holy Spirit to show us what these people need. For some, they just need a person who will treat them with gentleness and kindness. Others will just need someone to love them genuinely. Others will need someone who is patient with them. Maybe the society they are living in is so impatient with how they live and their actions, but they just need someone who will be patient. And by being patient, we can create a companionship with them. Next, this companionship will always create a relationship with them. And now we can relate as friends. We have a relationship with them. They can now want to know more about us as we try to know more about them. And as we tell them more about us, that is when we also take that time to create a relationship for them with Christ. We introduce who lives in us to them as they want to be like us. Remember, when you have gone on a journey with this person since you approached them, and now you have a companionship, they would like to imitate you. They would like to live like you. They would like to talk as you talk. They would like to do things as you do them. And so they will want, want, want to know, what do you do different from them? And that's where we introduce now the message that we are different from the world because of who lives in us. Without such a relationship, those words may not make meaning to someone who is lost. But with a relationship, someone who has seen you, how you live in your marriage, how you raise your children, how you serve in your workplace, how you go out, how you talk, how you do things to the society, how you lead in the small groups you are in, how you behave, maybe teaching in class. This is something they have been in a relationship with you. They have been observing you. They have been seeing a difference between you and them. And now they want to be like you. They want to imitate you. They want this relationship to be more of an impact to them. And you can now tell them that I was like you, but he who lives in me, I have a relationship not only with the world, but I have a relationship with Christ who has changed me, who has transformed me, who has made me who I am today. And it will be very much easy 
and practical for them to believe in Christ and to be like Christ. They always have a lot of confidence that since they have seen you and they have seen how you do things and you assure them that he who lives in you is the result of how you live, then it will be very much easy to turn them to Christ. Remember, outreach is to turn these people, the lost, to Christ, but with a relationship, relational outreach. We cannot do outreach without creating relationships. We cannot do outreach without going out and approaching the lost. We can preach and evangelize, but the greatest impact we can make is to go and do Christian outreach. We go to the year level to understand their language, to understand their way of lives, to be patient with them, to know why they do things the way they do them, and try to understand them and to love them so that we can have a relationship with them. It is more of not judging them, but understanding them. And because you know that in the end, you will change their way of lives. It is a matter of time. But for relationship, for relational outreach, we need to be very patient. We have said it may take time. It may also need resources. And that's why we said that outreach is more of action than the message. We have the resources. We have the abilities. We have the talents. We have the spiritual gifts. Let us use them, all of them, to go out and make relationships. Where you need to spend your resources, God will provide. Where you need to show and bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the kindness, being joyful, even when they are not in joy, going out and loving them, being kind to them, trying to be of self-control regardless of whether they insult you or not, do whatever you ought to do. And the Holy Spirit will always empower you. The Holy Spirit will tell you that at this point, you have done your best. Now you can pick up from this point. And it is Spirit-led. It is Holy Spirit-led. We do not lead ourselves to do outreach. Remember, we are not bringing these people to ourselves, but to Christ. So we have to depend on Christ. We have to be prayerful. We have to be consulting Christ by reading the Bible and knowing Christ so that when we make this relationship, when we are telling them about Christ and our relationship with Christ, then we can convince them that indeed God loves them and can also change them and can also have a relationship with them and can also transform their lives. But it only starts if we have a heart to go out and make new connections. Let us not be in our comfort zone and be contented with the connections we have because we are connected to our fellow Christians. No, this man, the theme Christian outreach is calling us to go beyond our connections, to go beyond our comfort zone, to go out, approach new people, make new connections, make connections with the lost, with the sinners, make friendship, companionship with those who do not know Christ so that we can transform them, so that we can bring them to Christ. Remember, we may be good preachers, but we can do more by being action-oriented, that we go out, act, and do what God has called us to do, use whatever he has called us to do, and transform the life of others and create relationships. And through these relationships, it will be very easy for us to proclaim our relationship with God, our relationship with Christ. And these people will trust and believe in Christ because they have seen in action and practically through our lives. Let us create new relationships with the lost. Let us go out and make connections with those who need Christ. Let us preach the gospel through outreach, going out beyond our limits and knowing that God has given us everything, everything we need to do more. As we said, the little we have, we can use it to do much. And the much we have, we can also use to do much. 
the ultimate goal is to bring people to Jesus. And that way, we are saying is that outreach, Christian outreach, aims at bringing people to Jesus through our actions, through our way of lives. And today we have learned that it is do, through creating new relationships with the lost. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.